Today we're going to show you step by step how to measure and cut a PTO shaft. This time we're going to do it right. Let's get started. Yeah, we've shown this before. Uh, quite a long time ago I cut a PTO shaft, tried to show you how to do the cutting, how to do the measuring, and while I got a lot of positive comments on that, and people have said it's been very helpful, I didn't feel good about it. I have felt like that I could do better, and I could do a more visual job of showing you how to measure especially, and I've come up with a, what I think is an easier way to cut the shaft as well. So I just think it's important that I redo this episode. Let's get started with the measuring. I've positioned my new attachment right here. By the way, this is a new material collection system. We're gonna talk about in a future video, but uh, for now, I've, I've got this attachment positioned very closely to the tractor. Tractor's right here. I've taken off the PTO shaft cover, not because I need to, and I'm gonna put it right back on after this episode, but I've taken it off so that you can get a better view of what we're looking at here and how we're gonna tackle this. Now, this is the PTO shaft that we're going to have to cut. Um, just to define some terms here, uh, the, when the PTO shaft is pushed as close together as it is, I'm going to call that uh, contracted. And when it's pulled out somewhat, I'll call that expanded. Keep the PTO shaft in its contracted position and get the tractor as close to the attachment as you can leaving approximately one inch between the tip of the PTO shaft here and the tip of the female PTO shaft on the attachment. So I, I just need enough room to be able to put that shaft on. Now if you were able to get your tractor backed all the way up and hooked onto the three point and you have uh, about an inch here or even a little less as long as you can get it get it over that you know any half an inch is fine then you don't need to cut it at all, okay? But typically, the shaft is not short enough that you can do that when it, when it comes from the, the, the factory. So with this shaft in the fully contracted position, leaving about an inch, I am backed up right against where the quick hitch would hook up, right here, okay? So that's the distance that I need to cut off the shaft. So I'll show you how to measure it. We need to measure center to center, from the center of this pin to the center of this gap. Now a little trick on that, since we're working with the same diameters here, we can actually measure edge to edge. So I'm going to show you right here, I'm going to stick my ruler right in there, and I see that from the inside here, where I've got the end of the ruler, to the outside of this area is roughly two and a half inches. Okay. So that's our cut length, it's two and a half inches. That's the easiest way I've found to measure, uh, is to not actually have the attachment hooked to the tractor. Now in this case, my attachment's on rollers, so it's easy to move the attachment back and forth. In a lot of cases, that's not the case, so put the tractor in neutral, right? And then you can, you can roll it back and forth and, and, and get some of the same movement there. It still may not be quite as easy as a, a rollable attachment, but I think it's a lot easier than hooking it up and then trying to guess how you're gonna measure. In fact, let me illustrate uh, some of the issues with that. We'll hook up the machine, and then I'll show you some of the challenges you're up against if you try to measure it another way. We're attached now with the three-point hitch, and this illustrates uh, first why we need to cut the shaft, and secondly, how difficult it is to measure with this approach. So you can see that we have to cut the shaft because once we're attached, we can't, we can't fit it on there. Now you might be tempted to say, well, I'll just connect it before I get the tractor fully attached, and then I'll go backwards. Well, you risk, well, you risk a lot of things. Uh, if you watch what I did to the 2038R, you can push that PTO shaft all the way through the rear housing and spoil your entire day or maybe even entire week. But uh, you could also cause attachment damage with that approach as well. Now, the reason it's hard to measure here is because I have to try to hold it and I have to try to guesstimate how much I'm gonna have to cut off 
you know, I might, I don't have three hands. I can't hold a measuring tape in there. You know, I think, uh, I mean, I can tell kind of on a double check here that two and a half inches is going to be enough. So my earlier measurement was accurate. Just so much easier to do and easier for me to describe to you uh, with the detached approach of just getting as close as you can to the attachment and still leaving one inch or a half an inch between this tip and this tip. Now we're ready to take our shaft off for cutting. Hey, before we get started with cutting, I, I want you to see this diagram right here. There is a proper way uh, to orient a PTO shaft. Usually the end that goes on the attachment will have either a slip clutch or in this case, it has a shear bolt, I believe, right here. Um, I don't think we'll ever need the shear bolt on this particular attachment, but I believe it has one. So there is a tractor end and an attachment end, right? I guess they have a tractor end and a not tractor end. I think measuring is the most difficult part, but what I've heard from a lot of viewers is there's a kind of a misconception uh, about how much you need to cut. In our case, we saw that we had two and a half inches. We need to shorten this shaft by two and a half inches. We have an overlapping shaft right here, right? Some viewers have mentioned that they, it, it makes sense to them that you would cut half of that off of each end. Well, that won't help. You've got to cut two and a half inches. You've got to cut the full amount off of each side because they're overlapping. And when you look at it right here, it does make sense a little bit. In order to get this shaft two and a half inches shorter, this outside black cover will have to be cut off by two and a half inches, right? And presumably, the inside cover on its end will have to be cut off two and a half inches in order to allow it to, to overlap in that end as well. So we need to cut the full amount off of each end. Let's go to the vise. This right here is your friend when it comes to cutting. If you watched my earlier video several years ago, I started out with a hacksaw, hand hacksaw. I thought, oh, I'm gonna cut it with a hand hacksaw. Uh, even then, I was too old for that. Much too much work for me. This is an angle grinder. Uh, of course, this one is the Menards version. It's not very expensive for a battery powered, but you don't even need a battery powered. Use a, a corded one. If you don't have an angle grinder, get one. Uh, you can get them for 20 bucks uh, at Harbor Freight or Menards or wherever, and who cares if you get a junk one. Um, just just get an angle grinder if you don't have one. Now, I've replaced the uh, grinding wheel with a cutoff wheel, okay? This is a steel cutoff wheel. Uh, this one's from Norton. I bought it at Menards. They cost, I don't know, a dollar to two dollars, uh, unless inflation has <laughs> taken that. I have a brand new Wilton vise on the floor. I haven't got it out yet. Not exactly sure where I'm going to mount it. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to mount it to this old homemade uh, bench here. But I'm getting this plastic out here, uh, this shipping material, and that's because what I have no done wrong, I suppose, or at least damaged these shafts, uh, the, the plastic coverings on these shafts, nearly every time I do this. Because when I clamp it in the vise, um, I, I end up kind of pinching this. So I'm gonna try this uh, plastic here for that. So I'll put this in here. I don't need it incredibly tight. So that's probably another thing I've kind of erred on in the past is I just need it enough to kind of hold it. It's heavy on this end, of course. No, I'm not gonna try to cut it with a utility knife, but I'm gonna mark it with a utility knife. Um, so I'm gonna make a mark here if you're looking close, you'll see that's two and a quarter. I've decided that two and a quarter is going to be enough for mine. I hate to cut it too short. My dad would always say cut it off three times. It's still too short. So I'll make a little mark there. Maybe I'll make one one other place here. This is not rocket science. If you don't get it perfect, perfectly, uh, you know, round, it'll, it'll, it'll be all right. I'm gonna try not to cut the shaft itself. I don't really want any marks on the shaft. So I tried just to cut right in the edge of this, right, and uh, gently go around it without getting close enough to, to mark up the shaft. It's not a disaster if you do, uh, but it's just something I try to do, I guess, as a perfectionist. Here we go.
I have done this in the past without rotating it, but this time I'm gonna rotate it. Maybe I'll get a little better look and give you a little better look. Okay, I'm using a soapstone here for this marking. I might, I, I perhaps could have scratched it with my utility knife as well, but I'll try to use this soapstone. Oops, that's about two inches. I need to go a little further than that. My accuracy here is not, not perfect. And so I should go somewhere in between there. How you like that? Again, not rocket science. Now this will cut a lot more difficult. Still won't be hard with this grinding blade though. It's a little bit difficult because I don't have a good hold here. I'm letting the guard sit right on there and I'm actually turning the shaft. Turning the shaft with my left hand, the other hand. That's working beautifully. Now notice there's no grease on this side, so that means this is the outside half. So I'm going to take a file and just take a little bit of the burrs off here because I want that piece to be able to slide in there freely. This may not be necessary. You may be able to get it started, but getting the sh new shaft started in there, getting them to slide together, to start sliding together is the, is the hardest part. Now, they are only go together in, in one of the three angles. These are not identical. It'll only go together in one of the three. And that's to keep the two ends of the shaft, the two U-joints, uh, in sync properly so that they're uh, arranged properly with each other. Okay, I haven't cut the other end yet, but we can do a test fit. I don't know if I can tell which, oh, look at there, slid right on. Okay, so we're, we're okay on the big half. And we're done with the big half. I might take my file, get just a little of that off. Uh, Every one that I do looks a little rough around the outside. Some of you guys have probably got a better idea. Oh, that's smoothing up nicely. Uh, but mine oftentimes look a little bit rough. Again, sometimes it's not totally square. And other times I just have some, you know, burrs. That's not too bad. Good enough for who it's for. Hey, look, no damage. I like that. Here we go, we're repeating the steps. Mark it. Now we won't be able to rotate this, this outside piece because it's held with the vise. I didn't end up perfectly square. I shouldn't be using a cutting wheel as a grinding wheel, but hey, you get what you pay for. Same thing here. I can take off those outer burrs with the grinder here a little bit. And I don't mind, this is the inside one, so I don't mind if it has a little taper right here. But sometimes this is pretty hard to get, to get started. Okay. Well, that's what we're looking for. Okay, let's see if it'll get started. Not sure that was the right way. Not sure that's the right way. There, that's the right way. There we go. As long as we can get her started, we'll be good. If you're like me, you've wiped that grease off there and it's a good time to shoot a little back on there. Oh, come on, don't be out of grease. Ah, good, there we go. Doesn't take a lot to be a lot. Love my lube shuttle. 100% off, code TTWT, lube-shuttle.us slash store. Okay. Sounds a little rough. Probably still a burr or two on the inside, but it's not gonna hurt. Squeezed up pretty nicely. 
we're ready to go back on. This PTO shaft is pretty short at this point. Um, looks like we have about six and a quarter inches of you know, plastic cover left. And we want to keep a lot of that overlap. We want to keep as much overlap as we can. Um, now, it's not as desperate as it looks because we do have some overlap. But, you know, we have a couple inches of overlap even before the plastic covers come together, right? So we, we, we're okay on that. Now, if you notice, I've been making my measurements with the quick hitch on. This is an excellent reason to have a quick hitch. Getting a little extra distance allows you to have a longer shaft. I just measured and the quick hitch is four and a half inches. It extends the lift arms four and a half inches. Uh, and if we took another four and a half inches off here, we wouldn't have much. We'd only have basically two inches of plastic. And so uh, I would say if you're getting down to that short, you might consider trying to fudge some of those numbers a little bit, right? So maybe make the the end of the shaft actually hit the PTO shaft or make it so you can just get it connected because you want this as as long as you can and and if you start getting down that short you know to where you're just a couple inches in here that's that's a little bit too short for comfort okay let's put it on um, anytime you mount a PTO shaft this is the same inch and three-eighths spline as a tractor uh, but anytime you mount it you can match up the splines before you push the button Right now I'm pushing the button after the splines are already lined up and that allows you to do one thing at a time. There you go. The tractor is attached. We're ready connect, to connect the shaft and we have roughly three quarters of an inch there to play with. Um, to make this connection you need to be able to rotate the tractor PTO shaft or the implement PTO. The tractor side on a Tractor with a mid PTO, at least a deer tractor with a mid PTO is easy. Shift the, the rear PTO out of gear. So the easiest way to do that is to shift your three-way selector um, to mid only, right? And that means the rear is not engaged. And at that point, you can rotate this little shaft right here, the, the 540 shaft on the tractor, to get your splines lined up. Then, as usual, you push the button and slide it onward. And as usual, it's a little bit painful, but not crazy hard. There we go. That's what it looks like when it's fully attached. We have roughly three inches of play in here. This is the critical measurement. You need to never use up all of this gap. Now, even if you have only a half an inch when it's at its closest point, you're fine. So we've got plenty of, of room to spare. That illustrates that our way of measuring was maybe a little more aggressive than it needed to be because we end up with a, a lot of give here. Uh, again, if you're short on shaft, you might cut a little bit less off than, than the measurements indicate. If you've got plenty of shaft, it's nice to have that, that extra uh, to be able to get it connected in there. I'm going to raise and lower this attachment to see how that changes. And, and you're, you have to have enough PTO shaft at the fully raised position and at the fully lowered position to make sure that it doesn't compress and force something to break either in the tractor or in the attachment. Hey, let me know in the comments if I've left out anything on the PTO shaft measuring and cutting. If you got any better ideas, I'd have no problem doing it. an episode like this. Again, I want to make sure this is easy and people don't need to be scared of it. Hope you've enjoyed this. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. I want you to notice my high quality vise here. I inherited this vise when I moved here. Christy said I already had too many vices, but uh, this one I needed, yeah. So anyway, yeah, this is worthless. I have a brand new Wilton vise on the floor.